Hi everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. Um, today we're going to uh, talk about the structure of the um, cabbage or the head of cabbage, which is a close relative in the same genus as bok choy and the Wisconsin past plants that we talked about yesterday. Um, so we're gonna do the same basic thing with a different plant and hopefully you'll see the resemblances and some fairly obvious differences. Cool. Okay, so this is a red cabbage that I'm going to eat for dinner in a few minutes, but before we did that, I thought I should dissect it and show you that a cabbage is basically a living plant without the roots. Um, so the first thing I wanna show you about the cabbage is that it actually has a stem. Um, the base of the stem um, is here, and I don't know if you can see this, but my cinematographer will help us. There is a lot of, uh, it's a sort of a thick round stem here. In the center here is pith tissue. That is mostly parenchyma that has a lot of starchy storage cells, um, metabolically active with a lot of ameloplasts and um, no photosynthetic tissue. Then there's a ring of vascular tissue sort of near the edge, but not at the edge. And you can sort of see it's a little bit browner here. And I can tell that that uh, ring is still vascular, um, still working, the, at least the xylem is still working because when I put this head of cabbage in the water um, last night when I decided I was going to do this, um, it actually started sucking up some of the water and it started turning the leaves a little bit green actually. And so I don't know if you can see this, but cabbage leaves, um, kind of like the coleus leaves we used earlier, have a whole lot of anthocyanin in them. They're sort of a dark, beautiful purple color. But um, once they started uh, um, being in contact with the light this afternoon, they started developing chlorophyll as well because they had access to water from the vascular tissues and light to stimulate the production of chlorophyll in the chloroplast. So all of this uh, green and purple tissue um, is parenchyma tissue. It's photosynthetic with the purple um, pigment in the vacuole. Um, there's also obviously vascular tissue. Each leaf has uh, a netted veins similar to the bok choy that we saw um, in the previous video that I showed you. You can sort of see that there's some photosynthetic tissue around the edges here and vascular tissue um, here that allows the leaf to transmit water to all of its cells. All right, so I showed you the parenchyma tissue, the vascular tissue, and now I wanna point out that there's also kind of a shiny cast. It's almost waxy or white in some areas. That's sort of evident of the epidermal tissue on these uh, cabbage leaves. It's a very thick and waxy almost rubbery uh, feeling to the outside of the leaves. That's protective and it prevents a little bit of water loss and it prevents um, some microbial infections as well. So that's the outermost layer of these tissues and it's only a few cell layers thick, so it's a little bit hard to see. Sometimes you can peel it off, but not, not today. All right, um, so I wanted to show you, so this is basically the shoot of the plant. Um, with the major leaves taken off of it. Um, I wanted to show you that every leaf here is um, attached at the stem. Um, and the place where it's attached is called the node. And at the node, right above where the leaf is attached, you can see that there is a axillary bud. Now in the bok choy, the axillary bud was expanded and it looked like a little cabbage growing up or a little branch in the axle of, or the sort of the crook of the leaf. But here, the axillary bud is very reduced. It almost looks just like a small little purple button. Um, and every leaf where it's attached has a node, and I'll show you one more just to prove it. Um, that one is located right here, see? And, it, and you can also see that it's a lot brighter on the inside of the cabbage because those leaves have only anthocyanin and no chlorophyll. So compared to the other side of the leaf, which is sort of darkened with chlorophyll, you have the inside that has just the anthocyanins. All right, at this point, I'm going to slice the cabbage in a longitudinal way 
just right down the middle if I can manage it. So we can get a good look at the inside parts of this shoot. All right, so here it is. It's quite cool looking. I'll just show you the one half. So now you can really see that this is a stem with some leaves and the leaves are curled up over the apical meristem. And the stem is white in this case because it's completely um, uh, invisible to the light. So there's no chlorophyll as in most stems which turn green. This one is concealed from the sun so it's all white. And the stem here is mostly parenchyma in the center. Um, that's the um, pith. And then the vascular tissue is here um, near the edges of the stem. It's sort of moving up here. And at every point where a leaf is attached, the vascular tissue comes in in order to feed the leaf um, water and to ship the sugars potentially back down to the stem. Now, most of these leaves are not photosynthesizing anymore. Um, these are just storage leaves, but you can see the basic idea here. So every point along here is a where a leaf attaches. So this is a node and this is a node and the space between the leaves is the internode and the internode length determines how big the stem is. And there are a whole lot of leaves here sort of stacked closely together. And in some of these areas, you can also see the axillary meristem. So here, for example, is a node where the leaf attaches, and here's the axillary bud. Here's the node, here's the axillary bud. So I bet you know where the apical meristem is. It's way at the tip here, and it is producing very new leaves. So if we did this and peeled every single leaf um, apart from the cabbage, they would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until they were very, very small here at the tip. And we might be able to see what the apical meristem or the, the spot at which the apical meristem was producing new cells until the time that this cabbage was harvested. And I think that's all I wanna tell you about the cabbage. Um, it's sort of, fun to think about a cabbage as a stem with lots of leaves on it. I don't think we usually think of it that way. Um, I'm about to caramelize it and eat it with some uh, dinner. All right, that's all I've got, and I hope you guys are having a lovely uh, spring, and I'll be back soon because I have leaks in the refrigerator, so get excited.